called Make a Path Presents. Let's talk. Welcome to Make a Path Presents. My name is Ronnie Hayes, and today, let's talk The Walking Dead Season 6 Banner and all the bullshit that followed immediately after it was revealed. Alright, Deadheads, you know I take pride in calling myself the voice of reason when it comes to the Walking Dead rumors and everything else that hits the internet when anything pops up. I'm talking about posters and trailers and teasers and rumors and Twitter feeds and Instagram pictures and everything like that. Now, the banner is a new thing. I didn't think I was going to do a video on just the banner, but on Facebook, I see all these posts about how the banner is showing us a rip versus Morgan, people picking sides, Alexandria is going to be, you know, a, a war zone. Some of it gets pretty ridiculous. And I guess people forgot back in season three where the governor was standing shoulder to shoulder with our people as if he was one of them, you know, a new member. I can't even remember what people were saying back then, but what were people saying? Oh, look, the governor, he's a good guy in this. Look at him. He's standing behind Rick. He's standing with the group. He must be on their side, right? Because because that's what the poster shows us. <laughs> it's nuts. Listen, posters have a meaning and a purpose. There's exact posters, there's symbolism in posters, and then there's posters to just showcase the characters. And I believe this is the poster. It's just showcasing the characters in Alexandria, and it might have a subtle hint at some issues between some of them, but not a civil war. Now, however, I do have to admit, the banner does make you believe that there are some side picking going on on, you know? However, Father Gabriel doesn't make sense to be on Alexandrian's side because we know in season five he snitched. But then it seemed like Maggie kind of brought him back into the fold, showed him that forgiveness, showed him love, and opened up that room to healing. So it doesn't make sense that Father Gabriel now would backtrack and be on Alexandrian's side and against Rick. Now I know things aren't going to smooth over immediately. I know there's going to be some healing and that's going to take time. However, I think the band Banner is playing off of the popular opinion on the characters. Now, what I mean by that is Rick obviously has a problem, kills it. Morgan now is saying life is precious, so that right there, it's two different extremes. Us fans think they're already gonna butt heads. Then the Father Gabriel being a snitch, a lot of fans already know that he's against Rick and his group, so that's why they put Father Gabriel on that side. Deanna's the leader in Alexandria. Rick is is, you know, brushing up being the one who feels he should lead or change these people, teach these people, teach them how to change. Rick believes that his way should be the way they should live. You see what I mean? How they kind of separate that? Spencer is Deanna's son. He's on that side as well. I feel like they did that in a sense to hint at what could come because I do believe they're going to bring the uprising theme in the back half of season six and that's when Rick takes over leadership because of Deanna either steps down or dies depending on how they translate that to screen and uh, some people in Alexandria are just not happy with it and there's like a, a, a mini revolt now in the comic it's much smaller than that sounds it, it happens in like you know an hour. <laughs> One dude gets a little pissed off, it's Nicholas, and he decides he's gonna kill Glenn for overhearing something, and then he goes to hunt him down, and his idea is to either take over leadership from Rick or kill him or, you know, whatever needs to be done. He's pretty much just blowing off steam because he, he buckles the minute Rick shows up on the scene. So, it's a small thing, however, it was useful in the comic because of the cliffhangers. In the comic, you only have 22 pages, so when they're doing the recovery in the comic for the story, in the no Way Out story arc, you have only 22 pages, you need to pop in a suspenseful cliffhanger so they have this uprising story. Again, it fits in the comic material, but I don't believe it will fit in the TV show material unless you either make it bigger or forget about it altogether. And that's where I stand as a fan and looking at it from a writing standpoint. Either make the comic book uprising bigger and more dangerous and more, you know, tension or drop it all together because it just will not work. You have an uprising happen in two episodes. I just don't see that working. So I'm hoping they do make it bigger. Now, as far as Rick versus Morgan, I do have a video, Rick versus Morgan. I made it months ago and it, it basically gives you an idea of where I feel they should go with the character. The characters, I think there's tremendous potential here. There's so much built up here between those two characters where you can have so much fun pulling story from that where Rick is where he is. 
Morgan was fucked up. Morgan went through shit. Morgan was in a very bad point in his life. And somebody, and I hope we do see a flashback of this person that brought Morgan back. Listen, Morgan was who he was back in season three, remember, in episode clear, when he was killing people. You know what I mean? He was killing them. He was robbing them. He was making them leave. He wasn't around people. He was a dangerous individual. He was touched in the head and he had problems. Somebody he ran into saved him and helped him and maybe gave their life to help Morgan and it opened up his eyes that somebody would, I don't know, give Morgan's, and I'm only, I'm only just making this up now because we don't know Morgan's backstory, but it feels like somebody helped Morgan in a way that Morgan realized, wow, that was powerful, that affected me. All life is precious because I lost my shit and somebody gave me a second chance and I came back now and to pay the universe back to show respect to that situation, that's why he didn't kill the wolves. That's why he believes all life is precious because now he gets a second chance to live, a second chance at life without all the hate built up in his heart, without all the aggression, frustration, and everything like that. And again, I'm just trying to predict what might happen or what potential story could unfold through what we, you know, using with what we, what little we know, using what little we know, basically. Now, I believe that that's very powerful because now Morgan can do the same thing for Rick. And I think that would be very powerful to see Morgan end up doing that for Rick, bringing Rick back and showing Rick that, you know, all life is precious. It's not about killing them. It's about, you know, justice and stability and civilization because that also fits in with the comic book uh, it, later on. And I'm talking about later on, later on. Uh, Rick establishes a civilization and they need those rules and laws and boundaries boundaries and everything like that because it's a very important part in the comic book in the story if you have Morgan bring Rick back from that edge and then later Morgan will give his life and again watch my Rick versus Morgan and I'll go in a little more detail but if Morgan give gave his life up uh, when Negan comes up and we're talking seasons later if Morgan was to give his life up so he dies at the hands of Negan because all life is precious so he gives his life up however that happens I think that would be a powerful message and it would be a very useful tool for the story for what Rick does to Negan in the comic book uh, if they if they did that similar thing in the show and I don't want to spoil it here but whatever Rick does after All Out War to Negan you know that kind of builds that up there because Morgan's like all life is precious and then maybe he'll talk about structures and laws and eventually what they should do to people like that and then if Morgan was to give his life knowing that that's the only way this situation's going to end and then Rick honoring that and building civilization he's come back from that ledge and he's like you know what I can't just kill people we have problems with we we need to show these people, you know, we need to lead by example. So we're going to do something with, with Negan that's going to give these people a clear message of what we stand for. I think that's very powerful. Again, I got so much more I could talk about, but we need to cut this short because I just want to let you guys know, uh, this video is supposed to be two minutes and I just blab, 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 blab. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit it, guys. I'm putting an image on the screen and you guys are going to just listen to me talk if you want. So <laughs> it is what it is. All right. No, I do not think the banner is going to mean people are going to go to war. The banner is subtly showing us that yes, people will have differences in their opinions on how to run things, on how to do things, on, you know, what the next step is. Uh, but I do not think that it's going to split the entire group into a civil war at Alexandria. I do believe there will be an uprising. I do believe there will be characters that cause problems. However, I do not believe it's going to be a Rick versus Morgan, you know, fight to the death or altercation. I, I just don't see that. For me, it just wouldn't make sense. I guess you can make that kind of tragic, but it just, it, it wouldn't make sense to me. I just don't see it. And the main reason, like I said before, is because Morgan went nuts. He went to crazy town. So for Morgan to come back and be like, I'm all Zen now, so I'm better than you and we're going to go to war because I don't like what you're doing here. That just seems bullshit to me. It doesn't fit the characters, doesn't fit the story. I don't even know why that would be in the, the story. Uh, but I'm just putting that in there. I believe that Morgan would be more like um, more like a mentor, so to speak, or somebody who could kind of get through to Rick and help bring him back from that ledge of almost going off it and being a nutcase, you know, kill anyone who causes problems. Guys, I'm just going in circles here. Listen, give me your thoughts, ideas, and predictions down in the comments below, because I'm done talking. 
It's your turn. Subscribe now.